Honestly, it comes down to just a love of amazing music. That's really the main reason. 30 years since the death of Durfley seemed like a good excuse to play these pieces all together again. The Prelude and Fugue on the Milan is just incredibly remarkable, uh, based on a, a theme that he himself has kind of devised by extending the alphabet uh, to include the letters A-L-A-I-N um, after Jean Alain, who was uh, an up-and-coming uh, young composer, uh, heroically killed in, in World War II in the French army. And uh, this piece is a tribute, and it incorporates uh, not only this, the name itself into the piece and, and inspires almost every motive in the piece, uh, but also incorporates Alain's most uh, famous piece, Litanies, which is a, a simple chant-like tune, uh, which he himself, uh, in his piece, explores in an incredible variety of ways, and obviously uh, inspired Durfle to write this piece. For me, the most substantial work is the Prelude Adagio and Choral Variations on Vene Creator Spiritus, uh, and I think it's his most monumental work for the organ, uh, and not just in terms of it, its sheer size and the length of the piece, but uh, the depth with which he explored uh, harmony and counterpoint and, uh, and texture. Um, there are moments where there are just one or two voices playing to seven, eight to ten voices all playing at once and how he morphs from one moment to the next with utter smoothness and control uh, and uh, natural, uh, a natural sound uh, is, is absolutely inspiring and glorious and all of it based on the chant. Um, and he employs a, a rather dramatic effect that is not giving us the entire chant till almost towards the end of the entire piece. The prelude is based on the second and third phrases of this four phrase chant. We finally hear the first phrase in the adagio about six or seven minutes into the piece. Um, there are lilting rhythms and uh, harmonies throughout. Uh, very sensuous music really. What's remarkable about this music to me and what makes me so passionate about it is the fact that everything on the page serves a purpose. There's nothing that's difficult just for the sake of being difficult. There's nothing flashy for the sake of being flashy. Everything there um, serves a purpose. Uh, the harmony is utter perfection. The counterpoint uh, in the contrapuntal uh, portions of the music is exquisitely crafted uh, and in spite of all of those individual elements the whole is still greater than the sum of all those parts. Uh, I'd like to say that even though Durfle was nowhere near as prolific as Johann Sebastian Bach they share or their legacies share the same attribute that for all the counterpoint harmony, uh, melody, rhythm, all those individual elements, uh, what exists in the end is simply beautiful music. You don't need to know anything about all those individual uh, elements to be moved by this music. And if you do happen to be a musician and understand all those uh, disparate elements, so much the better. It makes the music more fascinating, but it doesn't require scholarship to be enamored of this music. You know, it's, it's a little bit of an awkward thing to celebrate the anniversary of a, of a death. I have to be purely, or, or very straightforward here and say, this is an excuse to play incredibly glorious music. <laughs> uh, I wanted to, of course, honor him and the legacy that his music uh, provides to musicians and composers everywhere. Uh, that's obviously at the forefront and a huge part of it, but you don't have to have 
uh, an anniversary or a birthday to play this music. It's it's inspiring any day of the week. This is the great thing about this music and all great music. You can play it one time or a thousand times and each time you will learn something new about it. You'll notice something that you didn't notice before. And each instrument allows that to happen. So uh, while I may not play the complete works of Maurice Durfle for a, for a while as a program after the 12th concert, I won't be tired of it.